Hey guys, uh, it says Jansi Strickler. I am not Jansi Strickler, although he's a huge uh, idol of mine. I really am impressed by what Kickstarter have done and every uh, every other one at at Kickstarter. Uh, Jansi got sick, or I think his dad got sick, so I was called in just a couple of days ago. And Jansi, he is the co-founder of Kickstarter, which is a huge crowdfunding crowdfunding platform. And I am the co-founder of Funded by Me, which is a not as huge, but probably <laughs> as important crowdfunding platform for Scandinavia. Um, I'm going to start my presentation with um, just saying how honored I'm, I'm to be here. And, and, and just meeting Simon and, and Vrita, it's, it's huge for me because I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you a bit later about how this works. But what happens is when you crowdfund is that you actually get not just money, you get a lot of uh, people talking about your project. And I've been talking about both of guys, these guys, for like over a year. They didn't know that because I met them first the first day today. So I'm, I'm happy that I'm, I'm here. Uh, let's start with the first slide. So crowdfunding is, is a new phenomenon. It started a couple of years ago, like the word in itself. It's not, it's not even 10 years old. But the act of crowdfunding is nothing new and th this is something that we've done for generations for like i think thousands of years because we always work together we always did stuff together we always pitched in we uh, as you know we built churches bridges cities companies based on the fact that you have a, a goal you have something to do and then you cut it up and, 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 and try to engage people which either invest in you with time or money so crowdfunding per se is nothing new what ha what's changed is that we actually uh, have new tools. So, in the early days when, when we were crowdfunding like in the 70s or even for 5,000 years ago, everything was local. You could only work on a local market because you, have, you couldn't reach other continents or other cities. Um, it was really hard to crowdfund, like if you wanted to build a, a church for instance or any project, it took years if you were lucky. Um, but the thing is, and what's really, really amazing, is that we are living in these days. We are, this is today. And I, I tell a lot of people all the time the fact that we actually are living in the future. We are you know, using the devices we dreamt of. Uh, I'm 34 years old, and I, I couldn't imagine that I could live this kind of connected life, that I could meet people throughout the world. And I couldn't even imagine that I could do the stuff that I'm doing today. So. You know what? Welcome to the future. Let's, let's do something about it. Um, as you know, ideas um, spread quite easy. And uh, what, what we can do today and what we are doing with crowdfunding is that you basically have an idea. You try to boil it down to uh, something really interesting or really well told. And you put it to the internet and ask people to be part of it. And being part of an idea is not just collecting money for rewards. It's basically asking people to do something for you. And uh, as you know, ideas travel li really fast throughout the globe. We, uh, in a couple of seconds, we can reach people in India, America. Uh, we have friends everywhere. We have thousands of people online that know us or, or trust us at this point. Um, but during the last years, we, we have started to think a lot what is Facebook, like for instance, what is Twitter, what, what are all these people we are friends with, what can we do with them and what can they do with me, Wha how can we connect? Because at a certain point you get really, really bored of just telling uh, in the internet that what you ate today, for instance, or that you changed socks or didn't change socks or whatever, or that your boss sucks. You come to a point where you want to see how can I use my 700 friends or how can they use me because I have knowledge to, uh, to give to them or uh, uh, interest. So the crowdfunding tools out there were built just for this course. That you want, we wanted to connect people who have an idea and connect them to people who want to be part of that idea. Because I'm so convinced that today are we living, we're living in a, in, a, in a world where we are not uh, happy at, um, that when we get a pre-product, pre-packaged product. Like for instance, it's really fun to buy a CD, but it's really much more fun to be part of that making of that CD. Um, since I run Funded by Me, and we s we've been running that for a couple of months now, I, I've been backing up a lot of projects that's on our site because I really love what they're doing. And I'm starting to get rewards now. And it's really amazing. Like Simon, for instance, here, he just crowdfunded a, a book, and I'm really looking forward to get the book. Uh, I've been to Theatre Place, 
uh, um, where I go into the audience and I know that this play is done because I once contributed with like 200 crowns. Um, I had some guys sing a song to my wife in the city at Valborg Press Afton because I gave them 100 crowns three months earlier. So it's, it's you, g you start feeling the sensation of being part of something. Um, so let's, let's just briefly go through l the, the three words which everybody at this point talks about, it, with the three crowd words. It's crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, and also equity crowdfunding, which is becoming much more interesting, uh, more and more interesting now. So crowdfunding is basically an uh, 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 idea that you um, present and you decide uh, a goal for it and then a monetary amount that you need. For instance, you need 50,000 50, to produce a record or you need 100,000 to travel or whatever. So that's basically, you, 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 you collect money to, to be able to start doing your idea. So you pre-sell your idea. The other one is crowdsourcing, where actually the money is not the important one, but, but you ask for help. Like for instance, let's, let's build something together, or let's uh, collaborate on a book release, or let's, um, let's clean a park, or let's create a company from scratch. Or for like Foursquare, let's create a story about our lives, which everybody can take part of. So that's crowdfunding. And then the third one, which is equity crowdfunding, is a bit more tr intricate because equity crowdfunding is basically when you give away stocks. Basically, like I have an idea and it's worth 1,000, 100,000, and I can split it up and I can give you shares of it. And that's something that a lot of people want to do, but it's a bit hard to do because the, both the American and the Euro Euro European law laws are a bit hard. They, they don't allow you to uh, present a stock option to more than tw 200 people uh, publicly. So you have to find other ways to, if you want to do that. But th these three tools are, are out there. Um, we're here to talk about crowdfunding, and this is our platform like, that I'm running at this point. It's called Funded by Me. It's growing all the time. Of course, ju during July it was almost dead because a lot of people tend to not use computers during the summer. But now it's, now it's exploding in again, so I'm, I'm really happy. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm really here to talk about this. And this is actually at a list of all the crowdfunding platforms at this point. So don't, it's not about what, which platform you use, it's basically how it, you, you use it and how, how do you interact with your audience. And, and that's, that's really interesting because all the audiences we are having are different. Some are global, some are local. Um, for I think Simon's audience is fully global, but if you do something in just this city, it's not interesting to connect to the, the rest of the world. Or if you, for instance, work with film, then you should uh, use a crowdfunding platform, maybe focusing on film in your lo locality. So you have a, a long list. And just to finalize a bit this um, era w that we are in, um, a lot of really smart people have been talking about the rise of the social and creative class, which is basically a um, scientific approach to the fact that uh, we are not being able to compete with India and China and other countries on how to produce stuff. We can't, you know, every company is putting their, their force in, in, in different countries, which are a lot cheaper, but what do we have instead? And what we have is a lot of creative power, a lot of social power. And basically, we know how to use a lot of new media. So this is something that we can do. And also uh, involved all those people that are following us, um, because People want to be part of what you're doing. People want to tell your story. People want to be part of what you're doing. I, I'm, I'm fully convinced that we're coming to a point where you can't, you can't le longer s stand and wait and uh, uh, finalize your product and then put it to the market. You should do it way, way ahead. Um, and as I, t I was telling Simon uh, just before I, was, uh, I came up on stage, and I think Britta too earlier, is that even without me knowing them for a year, I've been working for them. I love their projects online, I watch them. I'm not sure if I backed you or I, if I had time to back you, but I know that I told a lot of people, I, I told hundreds of people about the project. I went to the city council and I gave Simon's project as an example. So basically, I've been working for, for free for him because I love his idea. And we were discussing that earlier, like this is, that's really valuable. He raised a lot of money with his project, which is with his uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign, but 
getting me and all the other thousands of people working for him is amazing. And, you know, I, I, I have thousands of stories that to tell you about people that are crowdfunding and are raising good, good, good money, but every one of those are telling about what happened on the site. Everybody has like a story of how they got contacted, um, how the idea got public, or etc. So that's why I, I just want to say, you know, crowdfunding is basically this. The money you raise is basically it's just a positive side effect. Uh, what what happens during the period you crowdfund and afterwards is actually the value that you get. Um, and this is sort of just a bit interesting because I should have put this as a last slide, but. This is my Facebook friends. It's not so much, but it's quite all right. Um, not so many Twitter friends, but that's also all right. And then I have a, a friends and family, and then I have some email lists. And suddenly, when you start boiling it down, you realize, oh shit, this is real, real people, more than 1,500 potential investors. So if I just have a good story to tell, if I package it good enough, and I, I'm uh, convinced enough to, 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 to tell the world, I will probably make it. And just to prove it, I can tell you the story of how Funded by Me was built. We got to a point where we said, you know what, we have to know how, to, how, to, how, how it is to crowdfund if we want to work with crowdfunding. So we decided to crowdfund our own crowdfunding platform. So we begged, we borrowed, no, we didn't borrow, we begged, we <laughs> begged some more, we made phone calls, we talked, we uh, gave lectures, we thought about what can we give in return, and we came to a point where we actually got a lot more money than we wanted or needed, and also a lot more attention. So I'm no, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. So thank you for listening. Let's invite Simon on stage. He's going to tell about an amazing film that he's producing and also one of the mo more successful campaigns on, on Kickstarter, I think. <laughs>